Hello there. General Kenobi. Who wants to go on a 4,000 mile road trip? Let's go to Miata Reunion. I'm hoping to do the most epic trilogy since Lord of the Rings. Well, not really, that's that's an impossibly high bar. But uh, yeah, this is going to be a giant 4,000 mile road trip out west. The most epic of my road trip films yet. Probably three parts, I think. So, hence the trilogy thing. But yeah, it's gonna be fun. We're gonna go out to Grand Junction, see the Flying Miata guys and whatever else happens out there. Keep going west down to LA, do a bunch of stuff there. Go up the coast, the Highway 1, the infamous road along the edge of the ocean with a bunch of other Miatas to Miata Reunion in Sonoma. It's gonna be beyond epic, at least that's what I'm hoping. Uh, knocking on wood for no problems and uh, join me along the way. Beautiful fall leaf peeping season. We have a lot to see. So let's get started where we always do. That's right, we're gonna start with packing. This is all going in the Miata. <laughs> uh, why do I do this to myself? Why do I own this car? Uh, because it's fun. So, I'm gonna see if I can get all this to fit. Um, some things won't have to make it past Grand Junction. Grand Junction is my first stop. That's where I'm replacing all my fluids, transmission fluid, differential fluid, oil change, putting this guy back on. So that's the first stop. That stuff won't be in the way after that. But the rest of this, lots of various luggage, Lots of filming equipment. Um, I have to be ready for so many different things. Um, doing some for work, some for pleasure, uh, even a helmet for possibly track day ride-alongs and chair, bunch of tools. I decided to start bringing tools just because <laughs> things keep possibly happening. And um, yeah, lots of clothing for everything from swimming to snowy mountaintops. Let's see if it fits. Okay, you gotta admit, that's not bad. Uh, the trunk is absolutely Tetris to no end, um, but really the trick for the trunk is a bunch of smaller bags work nicely. Of course, I do have the, um, the Roadster kind of Miata, mold, almost molded luggage that fits in here really nicely. But I like even smaller bags typically because I can uh, have my camera equipment in one, close in another, and then you can fit around all the spaces, extra things like shoes and jackets and the small chair and the tools underneath this. So I kind of pack in reverse of what I might need, like the tools I probably need the least, so I'll leave them on the bottom. Uh, and then I even have my helmet fitting here, which takes up a lot of space. I do always bring a hammock just in case I need to like do some emergency camping. And uh, yeah, typically, four pairs of shoes or so, and a bunch of various jackets. Um, so those are all easily accessible. I do have my towel here just in case, Star Wars, Han Solo, and Carbonite. Yeah, we'll see that later. And so that's the trunk, fits beautifully. Then over here, again, all of this will be gone after the first stop, so that's uh, not gonna be a worry. And then I have this, um, side note, Look at this video here if you wanna see how I prep for all my road trips. It was from my last road trip out to Grand Junction, which is gonna be the first part of this road trip. Uh, that's how I check tire pressures and um, wheel lug nut torque and everything. Um, but I keep sometimes snacks, energy drinks, and a little cooler. Um, I do keep things inside the glove box, but you can fit a lot of stuff in there. I have two radios, um, microphones for recording in high wind situations. Uh, pain medication, sunscreen, bug spray. These things could actually fit back here where the roof actually folds and I could fit a passenger if I needed to. So, sky's the limit really. I think I've, I've got this nailed down pretty well. I always like to keep the drone up here so I can record quickly on that. Of course, I'll have my tripod that I'm filming with. A um, Couple little snacks. I keep the camera right in there for easily accessible. And I keep all my winter cold clothes like the gloves and hat and jacket behind this seat for easy access. And second emergency thermos in case I need a second coffee. Of course, over here on this door is my other thermos. I've made a video explaining the thermoses I bought and how they fit in the car. So that currently contains coffee. Nice pour over from this morning. And holy cow, I think we're ready to go. So leave your life hacks down in the comments for the ways you've road tripped your Miata. It is uh, a fun challenge, I would say. A lot of people think you can't do it. I get a lot of wild looks saying, how can you possibly do this? This car is not made for it. And honestly, 
I think it, it works great. Um, I'm going Halloween style, Friday the 13th style. It is Friday the 13th actually that I'm leaving. So this looks really sick. I had those teeth on last year. Uh, there's a video on how I did that, how I kind of prepped my car for spooky season. Uh, it is ghosty after all. And now it looks even more rad with all the ground effects and stuff. I think this is sweet. Can't wait to get some photos of this on the road. All right, everything's ready. Tire pressures are good, full tank of gas. We are completely loaded to the brim. I don't think I forgot anything. So on to the West. On our way, this is gonna be fun. I have high expectations, uh, praying nothing bad happens. But yeah, the car feels good. There is a strange noise. So that is partly why I'm stopping at Brandon's in um, Grand Junction. He has a lift in his garage. We're gonna lift it up, get the oil change done, get the uh, differential and transmission fluid done. Cause it is about time after all. Red light conversation time. Uh, it's a good, good time to have a conversation at a red light, right? Um, so these road trips are a lot of effort to film and so much effort to edit, but I love it. I love going back to look at my old road trips and it's almost like reliving it all over again. So it's a challenge and I, I appreciate you guys' patience as I try to strike that balance because on one hand, I want to fully experience the road trip and not let filming interrupt that. On the other hand, filming makes it more fun. On the other hand, filming slows me down so if i'm trying to get somewhere at a decent time it could add i don't know how much time to like stop and get out the drone and do footage and things it's all part of it it's worth it i love it but that's that's something to consider so we did get snow last night up in the mountains uh this morning i woke up to 30 degrees fahrenheit it's october 15th 12th 13th right now <laughs> dates and uh yeah it was a bit a bit intense but today is very sunny, so we shouldn't have to deal with snow up in the mountains. At least I hope not. There are a few fleeting clouds, but it looks pretty promising. So enjoy the ride. I'll try to get some scenery along the way. I'll let you know of any dramatic things that happen because everyone loves some good drama. But yeah, otherwise, enjoy some music, enjoy some scenery, and I will enjoy my time thoroughly in this little mean machine. start uh, the road had that stoppage with the one lane closed situation and then the actual road connected to I-70 is closed so uh, it's, it's not exactly a totally rough start because bummer the detour is a gorgeous canyon road like this so more canyon driving I'm not gonna complain but that does set me back fully 20 minutes which is kind of frustrating it's just frustrating though these these delays because it does eat into my time to like throw the drone up or stop for photos and stuff, but whatever, c'est la vie. Welcome to Central City. This is uh, not a place I was expecting to take you through, but it's kind of cool. It's a casino town in the mountains. Uh, Black Hawk and Central City are like sister cities, and they're just up here. Very, very tourist trappy, but very, I don't know, kind of quaint and cool and old timey feeling in some places. Kind of Vegas feeling in other places, I guess. Railroad was back there. I did that like a year ago today. It was pretty awesome. Nice little leaf peeping cruise. Obviously out here, a lot of leaves. The thing about the leaf peeping, as we call it in Colorado, maybe other states too, I don't know.
We are approaching Vail Pass up here in a few miles. Just surrounded by that really beautiful, like freshly after it snows, when the snow is collected on all the branches of the trees. It's so beautiful out here. I mean, look at this. Yeah, stunning. Um, so, but this is a good time to mention something I wanted to talk about, and it is the trim of this car. So as you know, I have a 2012 Special Edition, which is really just uh, grand touring with all the options of the performance package, the uh, premium package, and the contrasted colors of the wheels and roof and such, the mirrors, roll hoops. Um, love it. I, I intentionally look for the spec because I like the looks of the club, but I like the creature comforts of the Grand Touring. Um, one of which, most important of which, possibly the heated seats. Uh, it is currently 37 degrees outside, the top is down. Yes, I'm wearing a hat, but I'm wearing a really thin shirt. My seat is so nice and toasty, uh, and I'm only having it on three or two out of five. If you like road tripping, you like driving in a cold climate, there's something about having heated seats. Now, a heated steering wheel would be awesome, but of course that was never an option. It would be interesting if I could add an aftermarket with a new aftermarket wheel. That would be really rad. Alright, you want to see Vale? There's Vale. Just a beautiful, beautiful ski town up in the mountains. Uh, about two hours from Denver or so. The car is looking good. The diffuser is still there. <laughs> um, and it feels actually extremely solid. Um, from that video, in case you missed it, I <laughs> put it on with just 3M no screws the other ground effects are held on with both screws and 3m i was a bit worried but after driving a lot high speeds no problems i am still going to put screws in it but so far it's actually working fine so all right drone shots photos and onwards if i crash this thing i'm never flying a drone again because i clearly don't deserve it if any of you guys didn't see my trip out to uh miatas of the gap I lost my precious drone somewhere in the Tennessee River. Uh, I will be much more careful on this trip because I do not want to keep crashing expensive drones. Bad, bad life practice, but here we go. Take that. No crashes, epic photos. I am pretty thrilled. Let's bring this thing in. Now watch me crash it trying to land it one-handed. <laughs> but this looks like a good spot. Nice. No problems. And that was a whole lot of flying and I only used, uh, what is the math? Three-fifths of a battery? Yeah, I got just over 40% left. I am way up at elevation in Vail, whatever that is, what, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000 feet. Um, pretty fantastic, but yeah, how about that? How about them apples? Okay, I've learned my lesson. I'm gonna keep going west now to Grand Junction. Now I'm hungry, so try to make it in time for dinner. Got another hour and a half, or actually two hours to go. Let's get her done. So as you can see, I have quite the pitted windshield. It's now two years and 40,000 miles old, so lots of rocks thrown at me. But through the windshield, you can see the beauty that is the Rocky Mountains. 
This drive genuinely never gets old. This is Glenwood Canyon, possibly one of the most beautiful highway sections in Colorado. Actually, maybe the most beautiful section of I-70 in the country. There have definitely been some fires along this section too. Some of the trees never grow back, but the wildfire does also create space and the means for the forest to be reborn. We sometimes forget that they can indeed be natural, caused by lightning, put out by rain. Here, I'm about 25 miles out of Grand Junction, and I'm thrilled to catch it just before sunset. In fact, it's great to hit it with any daylight at all. Otherwise, you completely miss all of the scenery. Sure, the road is still interesting and slightly windy at night, but you have to admit, this is gorgeous. Ah, made it to Grand Junction. Beautiful, beautiful city, town. I guess it is the city, it's big enough. I don't really know the population but uh, surrounded by bases, almost 60 degrees. So that's nice and warm. We've gone 230-ish miles, averaging a little over 30 miles to the gallon, which is nice. Keep in mind, I still have the header and the tune, so that's pretty fantastic. Um, of course, up and down with elevation, but I was hooning it a bit in the canyon, so I'm pretty thrilled with that. But yeah, welcome to Grand Junction. My first time being here in the fall, I think. So I made it. Brandon and Mike from Flying Miata set to work helping me change all the fluids, helping me put those supplies I brought to good use. Transmission, differential, and engine oils, even a new exhaust gasket, and the screws to really hold on that diffuser. Then I set out on a fun day in Grand Junction, which I'll probably turn into its own vlog, but here are some of the highlights. So we decided Brandon's Miata wasn't fast enough, so he's bringing out the big guns. We're gonna try our first hot lap in the Cayenne diesel. You're in sport mode, right? I'm in sport mode. Okay. Okay, I'm ready, and I'm in manual, Wait, so I, I, my, I have to remember to shift. <laughs> I'm trying to eat wine and cheese back here. <laughs> All right, barely survived my first track day with a Cayenne. Never thought that was gonna happen. Track day. <laughs> Off-roading. Off does it all.
Probably an escape artist, and I don't even know it. There it is. All right, getting started a little later than expected, but 7.30 is better than noon. I don't know. First stop, gas. Second stop, coffee. And LA is our final destination. Actually, Oceanside. So, let's go. It's cold, it's 40 degrees. It's crisp. That's keeping me awake right now until coffee happens. And there's Copica. Once again, not open when I need them to be. God, what is with coffee shops in this town opening at 8 a.m.? It's ridiculous. I'm already running late, not gonna wait any longer. Starbucks it is. Got my Starbucks and saw something hilarious. This is a RAV4 Prime plug-in hybrid plugged into the exterior outlet of Starbucks. Look at that. That is hilarious. They are getting some free juice, which honestly props to them. A lot of people have plug-in hybrids and don't even plug them in, which completely defeats the purpose. Otherwise, you're just dragging around a big battery, which hurts your fuel economy. Fun fact. Um, yeah, all right. Coffee's good, now gas, then California. All right, now I'm leaving the valley, leaving Grand Junction behind, feeling good about everything. Uh, the car has fresh fluids pretty much all around. Um, transmission fluid, differential fluid, oil change and filter. The car is very happy. Uh, I'm feeling good, I've got my coffee. Even though it's Starbucks, it is the new blonde apron blend, which, um, I actually am enjoying more than I expected. Just under 800 miles to go, heading to Oceanside to see my friends Patrick and Liv. Uh, they run a YouTube channel called The Mocky Vlog. I think they might have two YouTube channels actually. Um, so, gonna go stay with, stay with them. Just gonna have a good old time taking you along for the ride the rest of the way to my first major stop. Grand Junction was a bigger stop than I expected. I didn't realize we would have the air show, and the car meet and the track day. Finally, some quality tarmac as we enter Utah. The scenery, again, still fantastic. Hopefully you guys have seen my road trip series out east. I did about 5,000 miles about two years ago, but I think I actually slightly prefer the road trips out west. I love the desert, the mountains, the entire lack of humidity, and I'm just a big fan of California. So driving to California just gets me pretty excited. Interstate 70 is pretty bland through the Midwest where I'm originally from. So it's still wild to me that all of this is also I-70. If you get the chance, it is fun to take I-70 all the way across the country to its end in Utah. I know I mentioned Colorado is beautiful, but Utah holds its own. These rock formations out here, just beyond epic. I'm determined to get to my destination by about sunset, but I can't pass up a drone opportunity like this. Got some successful drone shots and we are about to enter the canyon slash mountain and see what that's all about. But look at this place. This is awesome. This is epic. Obviously the phone can't do what the drone could do, but we are oh, ready to head out and up into that thing, whatever that looks like.
So it's not all downhill from Colorado. I just passed the summit of another pass. So just hit 8,000 feet elevation, which is not the highest on my trip, of course, but there's some higher ones in Colorado, over 10,000. But we're up here. There's some snow up at the top of the hills. So not quite the sea level yet. That being said, I'm really excited to try my new modifications at sea level. Um, I have not yet been to sea level with the header two. I've been close with the header on my way to be out of the gap. Um, if you saw that video, that was my first experience with the header, but before the two. Um, actually, that's where I met Steve, the owner of VersaTuner. And so that prompted that conversation to try that out. So now I'm excited to try the header with the tune. And Brian from Fab9 is working with a custom tune for me um, to basically optimize for my specific setup, the intake, header, muffler, um, all those things. Really the header is the only major thing on that. And then also optimize it for 91 octane because out west here, we don't have 93. It's a bummer. Uh, sorry, that's, the, that's, that's one thing the Midwest has on us. This is true, that and cost of living. <laughs> but I'm excited to try that out. Can't wait to see uh, what, what Brian sends me. I've got all the stuff with me to flash the tune wherever I am, so this will be awesome. But in thoroughly enjoying the modifications, uh, I am actually back on the stock shifter assembly right now, kind of reliving that, which has been nice. Uh, I like the short throw, I like the stock one. Really the perfection would be halfway in between the two. But yeah, rocking the stock shifter, the fly me out of shift knob, the Alcantara shift boots, Alcantara dash. It just feels really nice and cohesive in here. Loving, enjoying the modifications on the road, back at home. It doesn't really matter where I am. They're, they're all modifications meant to be optimal for all sorts of different driving techniques. Even here on the highway, I feel like I have a little bit more passing speed with the slightly better torque of the improved airflow of the header and the tune taking advantage of it. So, mod your car. I'm also loving the phone holder. I think it's actually quite perfect. It does only get into the way of passengers when they're tall enough, like say five foot 10 or taller. If you are doing a drive like this, say from Denver to California, I would recommend, if you can, if you have the time, split it up into two or even three days. Um, that gives you time to really take in all the sights. There's so many spots where I would love to stop, um, get way more drone footage, like five times more drone footage and photos and experience the sights along the way. Uh, I just don't really have that capability this trip. I am somewhat in a rush. It's still a gorgeous drive. These sights are phenomenal, but if you can, I should say, break it up, take your time, enjoy the adventure, because it's not just about where you're going, it's about the journey to get there. Gas stop on the road. Really nice little gas station surrounded by leaves that are about to be turning. Uh, so that's that's a good good thing to remember. Flying J or Flying U, or whatever the heck they call it here. But uh, yep, yeah, that was the first major gas stop. I looking at uh, probably one more, maybe two more, um, until we get to the final destination in Oceanside. I've had people ask me how I plan my trips, you know, like stops and such. Um, it's pretty dynamic. On a perfect scenario, I would actually plan all the stops ahead of time if I have the time to do that. But as per usual, time is like my greatest enemy. <laughs> yeah, in a perfect scenario, I would plan out all my stops, roughly 225 miles apart on gas stops also weighing into the actual cost of gas. I could use an app or website like Gas Buddy to kind of see what the rough estimate of gas costs would be. Of course, it's always fluctuating and it's always too high. But yeah, that's typically what I will do. Uh, but in this case, 
I'm honestly completely winging it. So once I'm down to like a quarter tank, I'm like, okay, what gas stop is in the next 50 miles or so? There's ways to do it well, there's ways to do it less well. Either way you get there. That's, that's what I do. What do you do? How do you plan your road trips? Also pro tip, road trip food. Bobo's especially, these are the best. Made in Boulder, hence the name Bobo. Um, amazing. So that's my go-to choice road trip snack, plus some quality beef jerky of some sort. Of course, when you can, if you don't rush like I do, you can probably stop and have some good meals along the way. Welcome to the end of I-70. We've made it all the way. We are going to Vegas, baby. Passing through the likes of St. George, Utah, another stop I recommend, we continue through to a tiny corner of Arizona where we traverse the canyons of the Beaver Dam Mountains, taking us from up on the mesa down towards the valley that is Vegas. I love this canyon. And right at the end of the canyon, traffic. Made it to Nevada. Looks like um, Nevada. <laughs> Basically a desert, some greenery of course. That's, that's a lot of the deserts out here, actually. People assume they're just like cacti and shifting sands. And although that is a part of it, this is a lot of the, you know, the, the terrain out here. The, the vegetation is kind of sparse, desert vegetation, but still vegetation. It's not just sand dunes. And various settlements, but also a lot of empty space that you can see out there. So, and uh, casinos for sure. Check it out, the final stretch into Vegas, baby! Either the last gas stop before California or maybe the second to last, but this might take me most of the way there. Gas is getting expensive. Got 454 for normal gas, so I didn't want to know what premium is. But uh that's just part of it, man. These bigger cities out west, just out west in general. Vegas, California is gonna be the worst. And I always take these trips when gas prices are like at a premium, which is just a, a bummer. All right, we're off again, and holy shit, Red Kissel! Uh, anyways, we are headed to Oceanside. I'm not quite gonna make it. It looks like 287 miles, and that's just a bit out of my fuel tank, my abysmal fuel tank range. A little bit behind. I was hoping to get there by six, but with the, uh, you know, amazing drone stops and a couple of more fuel stops and things, thing, oh, and that traffic. That traffic set me back 15 solid minutes. So all things considered, it's all right. I'll still get there before the sun is completely set. I'm just gonna make most of it. I told my friends, Patrick and Liv, I am running a bit behind what I was hoping to be running, but uh, they're cool too. They're chill too. Surround yourself with chill people. So I've never actually driven into Los Angeles from Vegas. I've done the reverse and it was kind of at sunset. So this is technically new territory for me. I'm worried slightly that I'm with traffic that was going to Vegas for the weekend and going back to LA now. 
but maybe it'll help that I'm not going to like Santa Monica or like the other side of LA. I'm actually going south so I can kind of circumvent LA a bit. But we'll see how the traffic is going down the mountains into the, the LA area. Sick. inspection facility. I guess we just drive slowly. I have no idea. Red Kissel. Uh, anyways, yeah, that was nothing. I just drove slowly through the gate and we're fine. I don't really understand California at all, but maybe that was an old thing. I don't know. But hopefully a straight shot now. We got just under four hours to go, probably. This all feels so familiar. Not because I've been here, but because I've played GTA 5. Literally the most maddening type of traffic where I've come to a complete stop multiple times, not because of an accident or anything, just people don't know how to drive. There has been so much of slow people driving in the left lane and the people going around and then slowing down and then just gets completely chaotic. I, I genuinely don't understand. I don't wanna blame California drivers. I mean, maybe I will partially, but a lot of the license plates at fault were like Nevada, Utah, I, there's no real pattern. It's just, for some reason, entering California, everyone just forgets entirely how to drive or, or something. I don't, I don't understand. In true California fashion, I am behind a Tesla and I have a supposedly 30 minute stretch of red because of some accident on the one corridor that connects essentially the main corridor that connects Vegas to LA as I go through the mountains north of LA. So that's just lovely. Whatever, I have a podcast helping me, the Collecting Cars podcast, shameless. Oh, okay. Well, there goes Waze letting me know. Um, love this podcast. Curious about your guys' favorite car podcast. Um, of course, shameless plug, the Five Little Film Show is mine. I'm trying to help ramp that up again. And uh, I also help with the Out of Spec podcast. Batteries included, of course. My friends Kyle, Tom, Dom, and Martin. And then Martin's own podcast, EV News Daily, if you want daily EV news. Of course, I like Donut Media's Past Gas. And Everyday Driver is probably the one I listen to the most, or at least the one I don't miss an episode from. Boy, though, there's worse places to be caught in traffic. This is gorgeous. And <laughs> I'm guessing it's telling me not to speed. Yeah, it's not going to be not going to be a concern of mine. That's so gorgeous. Um, I've been in traffic for a while now, but I'll start the time lapse so you can skip through it and just know that it was even longer before this. of the ocean I mean not really but sort of like it's, it's out there somewhere right before the Sun is setting 
but I have 20, less than 20 minutes from my destination, so we're getting there. We finally made it with just a hair of light left. Some fun cruising with that Tesla. <laughs> He's a funny guy. He looked me up on Instagram, found me, so maybe I can get the clip from him. But I am so ready to stop driving. All right, it's finally the next day and I finally get to see LA, well, I guess Oceanside, in the light. So, I'm at my favorite place. Because gas here is so freaking expensive, may as well get as much discount as possible. So, Costco it is. All right, got my premium gas. 91 octane out here and I'm excited because I'm about to go tune my car hopefully somewhere interesting with a view Because um, I'm gonna make a video on it, of course, uh, but Brian from fab 9 just sent me a custom tune Adapted in theory to my modifications and to 91 octane specifically uh, Which is good because the out-of-the-box tune is 93 octane. So hopefully This is an improvement. This should be I mean the tune as is is fantastic, but this is just another step in the right direction so just got my costco gas 515 a gallon but that's still cheaper than like 560 where it seems to be everywhere else but that's california for you Wow. All right, so tuning is done. Tuning feels fantastic. Made a little video on that. Um, yeah, basically a new, a new tune optimized by Brian at Fab9 for the specific mods that I have, which are the header, muffler, intake, and also adjusting it for 91 octane since I don't have 93 in at home or out here in the West in California. So super thrilled to see how that goes. Now I'm on my way to meet my friend Quan for drinks. He's another white NC owner who I met two years ago out here. And I'm really excited to meet with him again. But yeah, Quan has a white NC1, a 2006, I think, marble white. So the cool, slightly uh, yellower tone of white, but should be super fun, small world. Um, so some of you guys know I do editing for Everyday Driver on the side of my work. Um, Quan went to design school with Paul Schmucker from Everyday Driver. So just funny, small world thing. But me and Quan met through Miatas. So love to meet all the Miatas when I come out here. And uh, he's hopefully one of the ones I'm either driving up the coast with or I'll see at Miata Union up at the north side. Should be fun. Look at the two shades of white. How'd you like this, the placement here? Huh? Not bad, huh? Yeah, this oh, is good. good. Front row parking. Like, I got a buddy who coming from Colorado just to come here. <laughs> like, all right. <laughs> you, got, you actually held I it. I was semi <laughs> Ooh, is that your horn? My horn, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Shitty ass little stock. Oh, yeah, look at that. I like the plate. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it's good. That's great. Still, you thirsty? Drinks, let's go. Yes. <laughs> Quan, what a guy, what an awesome guy. And such a cool car. <laughs> NC1 with pretty much entirely NC3 conversion. I'll show you more of that on Thursday when I head up the coast with him and his buddies. Yeah, yeah, lots of cool stuff. Like really good food, good beer, good, uh, I guess they do spirits as well. I didn't really have any liquor, but um, good beer. Um, and a cool caboose built into the side of the building, as you can see. So I'm gonna for sure write my Yelp review on that right now. And uh, yeah. 
What an amazing time. I love LA. I should move here. Well, thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna say that's part one of my epic Western road trip series. Um, tomorrow is the day I head up the coast with other Miatas and we all go, yeah, traverse highway one up to Miata Reunion. That's gonna be so freaking epic. So please stay tuned for that. Uh, but for now, thanks for joining me on my road trip out west through Grand Junction. Lots of fun sights and sounds along the way. The car has been flawless and it's now properly tuned for the rest of the remaining of the trip. So, cheers. We'll see you soon. Today's adventure was uh, not in the Miata. Actually hasn't left the driveway today. We took the leaf out instead. This is Kyle's leaf that he bought for $3,750. Brought us down here to Oceanside and this leaf probably does 50 miles on a good day. So it's seen better days, but faithful thing got us here. Just in time for the stunning sunsets. They never get old. <laughs>